Hey guys, what's up? I'm Jacob Kaufman. I'm there on the street. Uh, first of all, before I begin, I want to apologize in advance. Um, I've got a wealth of recording software here, and I have no idea if any of it's working correctly. However, I cannot tell you how many times I have recorded this video. Um, the reason I can't tell you is because I've lost count. So, um, there's going to be, like, muted sounding muffle from the computer's sounds, um, which is due to my screen recorder. There might also be a few artifacts. I've tried to get the bit rate so that you can see the, the nice effects okay, but if you see any artifacts like, um, window, like, splitting or tearing or whatever, that is not part of, of, um, the Linux desktop environment. That is, once again, an artifact caused by my recording backend, um... Uh, record my desktop is what I'm using. So, yeah, sorry if there's any issues with that. But I am here today to tell you a little bit about Linux. And, um, yeah, this is kind of an introduction to the Linux desktop. Um, because I know a lot of this stuff seems all overwhelming and whatnot. But, um, I mean, really, it's it's not that different from Windows. What? It's not that different from Windows. It's actually more like Mac OS than Windows. And the great part about Linux is if you don't like how um, something's set up, you can totally change it, uh, which I will show you how to do in other videos. But today we are not doing that. Today we are just taking a look at the default um, or semi-default KDE desktop. Um, so like I said, this video is specifically for the KDE uh, desktop environment um, because we are using Kubuntu and not Ubuntu, which runs Unity, which is based off of GNOME. You probably don't know what any of that means yet if you are watching this video, though. So, um, all I'm going to tell you right now is this is, um, one of multiple setups that you can have for your Linux desktop. This one, in my opinion, is most like Windows. Um, in that you've got your, you know, your bar down here. These things are called widgets. You can add those um, by going up. This will be here. I drag it to the corner. Um, this little corner icon here, it's called the toolbox, I guess. And yeah, you can click on that and click add widgets. You can add whatever widgets you want. Um, just, you know, drag them on to your desktop. And yeah, those are like Windows desktop gadgets if you are familiar with Windows Vista or Windows 7. Um, they had desktop gadgets. Basically, these are just uh, little things that can tell you tidbits of information. Um, the reason I'm starting with those is because they were what I saw. And whatever I see while I'm walking around, I'm probably going to divert from subject to talk about. So yeah, that's gadgets. As you can see, I've got like CPU usage here. I've got RAM usage, uh, temperature of all my hardware. You've got, you know, all of that. You can put whatever you want on here. You can even download more uh, widgets from what the operating system comes with. So down here in the bottom left, there is the kickoff application launcher. That is your start menu for Linux right now. And um, yeah, now this does not automatically resize, but you can resize it from the top right corner. Yeah, uh, you've got your favorites here, which, you know, like I can remove that from favorites. You've got a search bar up top. I'll search Chrome and I'll right click it and click add to favorites. And, um, yeah, you probably won't want to use this if you have a touchscreen, because this is KDE. That's the reason I used Kubuntu instead of Ubuntu, because Kubuntu runs KDE, which is designed for the traditional mouse and keyboard. Um, I'll show you how to use some of the more touchscreen f um, favorable distros in a while down the line in the series. But, yeah, as you can see, we've got some of the same, uh, same programs here that we do in Windows. We've got, you know, Google Chrome, we've got... Handbrake, uh, Audacity. Um, so yeah, over here in our applications category, we have all of our categories of applications. So like I can click multimedia, we've got all of my multimedia stuff. I don't think I've downloaded any of my games. I'll show you how to do that though. Um, download programs in general, not just games. Um, but yeah, we've got our you know file system recently used and our power options. So, yeah, let's, um, hmm, let's, let's go through the settings. Um, you'll see this should be pinned here by default. System settings, that is your control panel, uh, for Kubuntu. Now, if you're using, like, something, I'm not going to go through that right now. Um, <laughs> uh, never mind then. So, yeah, this is your control panel for 
um, Linux. And yeah, you've got things like uh, desktop effects. And what these are, these are like um, these are like your like magic lamp, like just effects like that um, that are on the desktop. We've got our display and monitor. You can set, you know, your monitor's resolution. I'm not gonna change it right now because it would probably screw up this thing. But yeah, you've got all of your um, screen savers, which are always fun. Uh, input devices, power management, printers. Printers are really easy to add. Uh, you can usually add network printers fairly easily. You just click, you know, add printer, and you. What I did was I just waited for this thing to pop up. And I just selected Network Printer and click Next, and uh, yeah, it it worked. As you can see here, so yeah, you can add, you know, all of your hardware and software. Just preferences are in this window. Um, and yeah, I will get into <laughs> customizing a bit more because, believe me, you can um, you can customize your Linux desktop a whole lot more than you can customize your Windows desktop. But that can be overwhelming, so uh, yeah, I will go through that once again later in the series. This is just an overview. Um, so yeah, let's see. Alright, so um, here we have our file manager. This is like Windows Explorer. Um, don't know why it just opened two of them, but um, yeah. So this is your home folder. You've got, you know, desktop, documents, downloads, um, you know, basic stuff. So this really isn't a whole lot unlike Windows Explorer. Now, there is one difference in the Linux file system. Have you ever seen um, in Windows that, like, your C drive? Have you ever heard that term? Where it says, like, C colon slash slash um, users slash your name. Well, um, Linux doesn't have that. Linux has the root of the drive, and that's just a slash. There's no C in Linux. Um... Linux uses names, like one terabyte hard disk, uh, Jacob Kaufman flash drive, um, rather than using letters. Um, that's the Linux file system. Um, package manager, and once again, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. But yeah, this is a package manager. Now, I did go over the differences between packages and um, programs in my installation video of this series. Um, but yeah, basically, I want to install a program um, or an application, I'll search like, uh, oh, let's say I wanted to install Live's Linux video editor. I would search Live's video editing, oops, I would search Live's, I screwed it up, that was my fault. Alright, Live's. So yeah, um, we've got video editing system, mark for installation. Now, as you'll see, when I click mark for installation, all of these different packages are going to pop up. These are called dependencies. They are um, small programs that this program needs to run. They make up an application. I'm not going to install this right now, but if I were to, it would be marked for installation. It would not install at that moment. To actually install a package, you would have to come up here and click apply changes, and then it would, you know, it would apply the changes. Now, when you are downloading um, Linux programs from places other than your package manager, um, there will be a few options. I'll go to google.com slash chrome to demonstrate. As you can see, we've got four options. We've got 32-bit options for our DEB and RPMs, and 64-bit options for our DEB and RPMs. Now, uh, you'll want DEBs for... Uh, Debian, Ubuntu, anything based off of those. You want RPMs for Fedora, OpenSUSE, Red Hat, anything based off of those. Um, and you need to make sure that your 32-bit or 64-bit uh, selection is correct. Unlike Windows, 32-bit software does not install onto 64-bit um, Linux operating systems. Um, now, obviously, Microsoft Office is not available on Linux. Um, I do, oops, I do believe that Kubuntu comes with LibreOffice. There we go. And that is a um, free office solution created by the Document Foundation. As you can tell if you click about LibreOffice, um, supplied by the Document Foundation. All right. So, yeah, as you can see, it's just like Microsoft Office. Now, there is something you need to do if you want to use or save Microsoft Office files. When you go to save this filter here that says .odt, you will need to change that to Office Word. Um, 97 through 2003 is what I recommend. Whoops, that's not what I recommend. I recommend .doc. 
for maximum compatibility. Um, but yeah, that is very important, and um, I'm sure somebody is going to ask me about that sometime. Um, man, I'm drawing a blank on what to talk about here. Um, I mean, yeah, people get scared of Linux. Um, they think that you need to be a, a programmer to know how to use Linux. Have you ever seen one of these things? Actually, um, uh, no, I can't control all Fs. <laughs> So yeah, if, you have, if you've ever seen one of these things, this is called a terminal, and um, I mean, I can navigate my file system, and I can also start um, programs through this, like, uh, I can start Magic Launcher using Java through the terminal, um, and as you can see, when I click things, um, things should, you know, start popping up over here, no, maybe not. Okay. Oh, I know what to do. Um, if I click test, then you can see things popping up over here because it's showing the code being executed. Uh, so, yeah, that is the terminal. And once again, I'm drawing a blank on what to say, but yeah, people get scared of Linux. Um, it's really nothing to be that scared about. Um, there are really a lot of cool, cool features of Linux that um, I will be showing you about. I'll be showing you how to how to pimp out your Linux distribution, like how to do this. Yeah, that's right. You'll learn how to do this if you don't already know what it is. It's called virtual desktops, and I will uh, make an entire video dedicated to virtual desktops because they're just that powerful of a tool. Um, but yeah, Linux got some really neat stuff, and you really don't need to be that knowledgeable to use it. Um, but once again, if you have any questions at all whatsoever, please do not hesitate to ask me um, in the comments, because that's what the comments are for. Just say, hey, Jacob, uh, blah, 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 and I'll be like, oh, I'll make a video for that. Um, yeah, so, that was a beautiful example, wasn't it? So, yeah, just, <sighs> I guess that's the Linux desktop. This was just showing you what um, what the specific version of Linux I prefer to use looks like, in case you weren't sure exactly what Linux looked like, because um, once again, some people think that when you're in Linux, it's just this all the time, which would be really, really bad. So yeah, it's not. It's actually more like Windows than you think, um, if you want it to be. If you don't want it to be, there are plenty of things you can do to make it unlike Windows. But yeah, um, that was just a very, very rudimentary, very basic uh, introduction to Linux. So yeah, any questions, please let me know. I will be making some more videos, like how to do virtual desktops. I am going to hopefully be making how to install a virtual machine today, because I can't get to my Netflix, because Netflix only works on Windows. Um, or it works on everything but Linux. Um, that's more correct. Uh, so yeah, hopefully I'll be showing you how to do that today. But yeah, um, this was how... Alright, this wasn't how to do anything. This was just a basic introduction to Linux. This is what Linux looks like. And um, so, yeah, if you've just not sure what Linux is, this is what Linux is. It's just an alternative to Windows. Uh, so, yeah, really nothing to be afraid of. So, yeah, once again, um, uh, let me know if you have any comments. Uh, I'm Jacob Kaufman. I'm there in the street. Uh, stay tuned if you want to learn a bit more about Linux. And I will see you later. See ya.